<laughs> On a serious note, I'd like to read 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And uh, I put this message together after listening to something on the radio that was not exactly upbeat, but it was talking about the, uh, the economy, basically a half hour of total negativity I was listening to. And I began to think about that, this verse, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And you've heard this before, it's a very familiar text. It says this, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Let us pray. Lord, as we approach this time of the message, I pray that you would speak through me. I'm just a person like everybody else. Nothing special, really. But Lord, willing to let you use me in your vessel. And now may we as a church open our hearts and say, Lord, speak to me the message you have for me. In your name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> have you ever been to a revival and heard Dr. Billy Graham anyway? Okay. It's quite an experience to do that. And uh, I first heard him in um, Municipal Auditorium. No, it was actually Kemper Arena in Kansas City where we lived for so long. And then later I, I saw I at Boyle Stadium, he did the Sunday closure. And then also when he was here at Veterans Stadium some years ago. If I were to, somebody asked me at the time what I, what I thought about Billy Graham as a great preacher. I said, well, his messages aren't necessarily theologically profound. They're not complicated. But they are simple. Simply Jesus Christ being proclaimed. And Billy Graham is an interesting man. He does not live in, in luxury. <coughs> He doesn't have a big mansion because he's in Montreal, North Carolina. And I never knew much about him until, oh, several years ago, a young lady came to me and uh, she said, uh, I'd like you to do my wedding. My grandfather is busy. He said, okay, he, said, he can't do it. And so would you, uh, you know, do it for me? And you know a friend of mine, so they came by and we the application. And I said to her, I have information, um, uh, what is your mother's name? She goes, uh, Ruth. Ruth Graham. I said, is that Graham spelled like Billy Graham? She said, yeah, he's my grandfather. <laughs> I go, really? She said, oh, I didn't tell you that. I said, no, you didn't. I said, so, oh, your grandfather can't. He's got that, he's got that crusade in New York City. She said, yeah, that's why you have to do the way. So, I asked a little bit about him, and I said, what's he really like? She said, he's a busy man, but he loves to be with his grandchildren, and the favorite place to take the grandchildren is Denny's restaurant. He loved going to Denny's. So there was a book that Ruth wrote, and I had talked to her at the, after the reception, in the reception, and uh, she mentioned her daughter Windsor, which is in the book. So if you read that book by Ruth Graham, the daughter Windsor, I did her wedding. Interesting uh, uh, situation, and uh, I'll say one thing, there's a lot of kids in that family that resemble Billy Graham as their grandchildren. So it was kind of interesting. But Dr. Billy Graham, after the tragic event of 9-11, and we all know, you know where you were at at 9-11, do you not? Sure, I was in my office. And uh, my son Matthew called that morning, and uh, my secretary says, your son's on the phone, he seems kind of upset, and I said, well, put him on. So I said, Matt, what's up? He said, where are you at? I said, where am I at? I'm in my office. You were supposed to be in New York. You were taking the janitor, Jose, to New York City, and we were going to get the early train, and I was going to take him to the World Trade Center at the Empire State Building. And he said, what happened? I said, oh, it's a long story. I'm going to New York City, and uh, I sold a guy tickets for the Red Sox Yankee game, and he couldn't go. And his wife didn't want to lose the money, so I took it back, Mr. Nice Guy. And so we get to the ballpark with a friend of mine. We saw about two pitches, and it started to rain, and the game was canceled. We sat in the stands for the longest time, and he says, what do you want to do? I said, well, I got a friend in Long Island. He told me I could crash with him. We could do that. He said, whatever you want to do, I'm going to take retired. Our school teachers. So whatever we want to do is fine. We're sitting there and I said, you know what? Let's get out of here. So we got there and I said, if we hurry, we can catch the last train. So we got there just in time to catch the last train out of New York before there was that long gap between the next train coming out. As we left the city, it was clear outside, and there on our left was the World Trade Center. And my friend said, wow, what a, what a view of the World Trade Center. I said, you know what, lousy look. I got these tickets. I'll find it and abuse them. We saw two pitches. I'm not I'm supposed to be the World Trade Center tomorrow morning. I get a weather report. Tomorrow morning in New York is going to be a clear day. And I could have been on top of that building. Talk about lousy luck. Well, <laughs> so be it. And of 
course, we all know the events. Now, where I would have been when I've been in the building, I have no idea what to say on that. But I do know I would have been stuck in New York for a couple of days. So we all remember the events of that day. Lots of things were said about it, lots of speculation of what happened. But Billy Graham said this. He said, it reminds, reminds us that we need to confess our need for God as we face a new kind of enemy, a new kind of warfare. He also emphasized this. We need a spiritual renewal, a spiritual revival in America. What is a revival? Well, in the church we put emphasis on evangelism. We all know what evangelism is. is. I've had an evangelism course, a seminary, Pastor Chris has taken. Lots of people have taken evangelism course. But there is a difference between revival and evangelism. What is evangelism? Evangelism is sharing the message of Christ and winning the unsaved. Revival is allowing the Spirit to come into your life and periodically just get you on fire for the Lord. Do you need that in your life? There's a tendency, and I want to think about this, and I'm going to be very honest with you. Um, many people think that uh, preachers have it all together. As you get to know me, you'll dispel that. <laughs> I'm not perfect. I know Pastor Chris, and people probably have told you he's not perfect either. As a matter of fact, Chris tends to sometimes put himself down on most of the times, and he shouldn't because I remember the Navy said, oh, I'm not that great. Well, no, he's a great guy. He really is. 